Good morning to everybody. Super duper excited for today's RIP call, the remedial improvement performance plan for everybody out there. And here we go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to seriously get a lot of content from an annuity expert. His name is Matt Cochran with North American Senior Benefits, works alongside with Jordan Smith in the unit region. So we are very honored today. And Matt, why don't you give us a little bit of a snapshot as to what these folks are going to be experiencing over the next 26 minutes? Gotcha. All right. Thanks for having me, Ashley. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so today we'll just kind of go over basic stuff, nothing too super high level um, for annuity stuff. You guys don't really need to know high level annuity stuff anyways, which is why you have specialists like me. Um, but basically, we're just going to go over really just an agenda of what's an ideal annuity client like what to look for, like ha ways to maybe find annuities in houses, because that's that's probably the number one question I have of how do you find them. Um, so just th that's a tidbit for that as far as what do you need to bring in the specialist, like for a fact finder, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when do you bring it up in the presentation? At what point? Um, and then really uh, language to as far as doing introduction to the specialist um, and then kind of do's and don'ts that I think some reps make mistakes that they don't really think about. Um, that to me seem kind of like common sense, but sometimes it's not always common sense for everybody else. But just do's and don'ts for the mistakes I've, I've found from uh, working with other reps in the past as far as how to be uh, as most efficient as possible. Um, and then at the very end, we can open up for any questions. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So, you know, especially when it comes to show me the money. So what is probably the biggest payout when it comes to helping our agents out here? What have you experienced as the biggest payout when it comes to an agent with an annuity that you've experienced? Uh, the biggest that I've experienced is probably for one of our agents is around 50, right around 50,000. Wow. Oh my yeah. goodness. Um, I mean, Guys, girls, how would you feel if you go into a home, you help a senior, but then the neat thing is you uncover the ability that they've got potentially a 401k that they never transferred over to an annuity, maybe potentially that they've got some pensions. So this is where Matt steps in as the expert. We are the experts when it comes to final expense, right? So let's bring on the experts when it comes to annuities, because that's icing on the cake. It's not our bread and butter, but it's our icing on the cake. So let's go ahead and start about, hey, who is the ideal client? Gotcha. So as far as for the ideal client, and forgive me, as my first uh, PowerPoint I've done in like decades, so I'm, I'm proud of myself that things. actually, I'm proud that things, I actually- Matt. We don't do we don't do many powerpoints on the uh, the other the other side of uh, Josh Earls region. So this this, this was uh, I was proud of myself that I knocked this out in a a decent amount of time. But uh, basically, ideal clients. So I'd say if a lot of clients, a lot of people ask me, what's the minimum? The minimum for annuity is ten thousand. But I would I wouldn't waste your time on a ten thousand dollar annuity because it's not just worth your time. Like Ashley said, final expense needs to be your bread and butter. Um, it, it's, it, it, the annuity is just ice on top. So there's only so many hours in the day. So I think in, in my opinion, 50,000 should be the minimum for what you're looking for. So that could be in a retirement account. Like Ashley said, an IRA, a 401k, um, it could be in a CD, it could be in a checking savings, et cetera. If it's got a dollar sign in front of it and it says at least it's 50,000, then we can move it over. Okay. But the other reason I say at least 50,000 is due to suitability where a lot of the annuities companies have suitability guidelines where if they don't have enough money, we can't move it over. Um, so 50,000 minimum should be what you're looking for. Anything above that we can uh, essentially help out with. I didn't put this on there, but if they're 81 or above, then I'd say that you need to bump that up to closer to about 100,000 because there's big, big cuts uh, based on ages. So I'd say 81 or above, I'd say 100,000 minimum. Okay. Um, easy ways to spot annuities. So when I, again, I'm not really in the, I mean, I, I do final expense, obviously I have a team, um, no need to know we're big as y'all's team, but um, when I was in the field doing final expense, I would look um, at, for bank accounts to see as far as a, to make sure they had enough money left over each month to make sure we were obviously overselling, make sure they could afford, Mrs. Johnson could afford what we're, we're, we're recommending for them from final expense standpoint. But you can also, the bank statement tells you a lot of money. A, do they have a bank statement or a direct address card? But do they have CDs? Do they have money coming in from RMDs? RMDs are what's called required minimal distributions. The government at a certain age, now age 73, requires you to take a certain amount of money out of a pre-tax account like an IRA or 401k. 
So if that money's going into their bank account, you can see if it's coming from an institution, like, wait a minute, where's this money coming from? Is this just a pension? If it's a pension, more than likely we can't do much with it. But if it's their their monthly RMD they're getting, that's coming from some type of retirement account that we could move over to an annuity. Um, so just looking for those things, those are just easy telltale signs from that. Um, and then the other thing is a telltale sign is if a client's, and I know we've all had this where clients like, oh, I don't need life insurance, I'm good. Like, what do you mean about that? That's that's great. Help, help me understand what you mean by that. Oh, I don't need life insurance. I got it taken care of. You know, and if they're not talking about a pre-need plan, lots of times they might be talking about assets. Like they got enough money in savings or retirement they're going to leave behind. Um, lots of times when they laugh that out or if you're showing them numbers, they're like, oh, 10 grand, that's nothing. That's not a lot of money. Um, that's usually some sign of the telltale sign that they, they have some some type of retirement or other means to help pay for that. Um also, if a client mentions that, oh, I get, I got something that sends me quarterly statements. If someone sends quarterly statements, it's either some type of, if it's life insurance, it's a variable, like a variable life insurance policy or a UL. Um, or if they're sending them annual statements, some fixed index annuities or typical UL policies will send annual statements. But if it's quarterly, it's a variable product. Um, so that's usually a telltale sign from there. And then lastly, in step three, that's probably going to be the best place to in the living benefit section to bring up the annuity, which I know a lot of you guys from the Wilmington class conference I taught, I know one of the reps in there was talking about the ship program. So I think you guys do a lot of that, which is awesome because that will, that's the easiest way to bring it up. Cause obviously the ship program, if you want to go to the next slide, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Ask if you got any questions before I jump into that. Yep. You're exactly spot on. Step three is when you absolutely want to bring that up. And the neat thing also is that we've got this huge, questionnaire list that um, Laura and I were actually condensing on the next upgrade when we do our presentation. But the neat thing with the presentation is, folks, it's right there. The question is right there. So for example, Miss Johnson, here, actually, instead of talking about it, let me just go ahead and show you guys. So I go click to my presentation. If you go all the way over here, oops, okay, bam. It's the question that's right here, bam. OK, so right after step one, step two, we're going into step three, the benefits checklist. This question right here is the moneymaker, right? So that question says this. Now, were you one of the lucky ones that was able to retire with a retirement fund, 401k pension, or do you have any other investing, right? So and the neat thing is that what Matt just said, I know uh, the Mountain Movers team, they do this a lot. So when they focus on over here in the Medicare savings, a lot of folks, they are actually filling out the um, extra help on behalf of the federal government with the SHIP program, and they're going to ask a question there online, and they're going to say, hey, do you have any life insurance or other assets like annuities? So guess what they do? They're going to go grab all that information and put it right here, right? So uh, let's go to the next slide, and uh, when is the proper time to bring up an actual you know, present, or obviously step three, but let's talk a little bit more about it. Yes. So, so I actually was saying, so step three, basically to me, this is the easiest way to essentially bring it up and to keep from feeling threatening to the client because our clients, they want to qualify for stuff. They like to be entitled. Everybody likes to win things or qualify for stuff. Um, so the ship program is really based on two things. It's based on your income and it's based on your assets. So I'm not sure if you qualify for, for this or not, but it can, the, the ship program is basically a state program that can help you out with your basically your medications, Mrs. Johnson, and it can help you out with your overall Medicare premiums. So I can maybe get help you out with your medications even more or get rid of that $165 a month that you're paying for that Part B or that prescription drug coverage that you're paying for. I can maybe get more money back in your Social Security check. I don't know if you qualify or not. And that's, I'm almost taken away then. And then depending on if you qualify, it's based on your income and your assets. So from an income standpoint, are you bringing in more than $1,500 a month or less than $1,500? And I just like the talking point. That just gives me a budget standpoint for the life insurance part. So now they know if it's over 1500 okay, they're, 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 they're bringing in more than most of our seniors, which is good. That tells me they can afford the life insurance part. Are they bringing in less? Okay, that gives me an idea budget-wise too. But the, the, the biggest kicker is, okay, okay, that's income. What about assets? Do you have any, or like Ashley said, were you one of the lucky ones that got a retirement plan when you were working? Did they take care of you? Hopefully they did. Did you have a 401k or an IRA, anything over 50,000 or under 50,000, any retirement accounts, checking CDs or anything, because they're going to want to know your assets. And then they're going to be more likely to give you all that information as opposed to if you just ask them randomly, 
hey, what do you have retirement-wise? They're going to be less likely to give you that information. But if it's to help them out, they will go out of their way to get you whatever you need. And then if they say, yeah, I have something, I would take it a step further and maybe say, hey, can you, do you mind grabbing a statement for me? And then if you can have that all on your iPad, that information. But I would still keep going through the presentation. Just circle back to that later. Don't let that disrupt your presentation for the final expense part. Okay. But you just want to get that detail and make a note. Okay. We're going to touch base on that later. Okay. All right. So th that's really more about the SHIP program. If you don't know a lot about it, then just research it. It's, it's not very complicated, but it's really based on income and assets. Okay. And then the other part is if you don't feel comfortable with step three, you don't feel like you got a good enough rapport at the very end of the, the presentation is the other way I would bring it up after the presentation's ending, where some of the language I use at the very bottom is I'll tell people, hey, Mrs. Johnson, one last thing we help out seniors with are state regulated retirement programs. Okay, just so you know, annuities, fixed index annuities or fixed annuities are state regulated, where variable annuities are federally regulated. So you're not lying when you say that. So they are state regulated programs. I'm not sure if you would qualify or not for those, but do you happen to have any IRAs or 401ks, anything with more than 50,000 or less than 50,000? Um, and if they say yes, like, great, go and grab a statement for me if you can. Do you have a most recent statement? If so, grab one for me so I can see if you qualify or not. And you see how I keep going back to see if I, you qualify? People want to qualify. It's almost like you're challenging them. Like, oh, I bet you I qualify. People want to qualify for stuff and they want to know. Um, so that at the very, so step three is one of the easiest ways, but again, it, you might not feel like you have a great enough rapport at that point to go through that. But obviously at the very end, if you got their social and you helped them out with life insurance, you've added value, it might be a better time to do it at the very end of the presentation, depending on how the presentation is going. So I'd say step three or at the very end. Absolutely. You know, right at that step 10, uh, you're just, what you said is loop back, loop back. You've already uncovered the fact that they do have a 401k or an IRA, and you just kind of loop back. Just keep going through the presentation, close the sale with final expense, because again, that is why we are there. This is, like I said, the bread and the butter. Now, when we obtain that information, what do we do next? Once she comes to us and says, yep, here you go, what do we do next? Yeah. So basically what you would do next is if you can essentially do the fact finder, that'd be very helpful. Um, or if someone has, I don't think I wrote it down on there or not, but if someone has, I know I wrote it on some one point, if someone has over a hundred thousand at that point, then, and, and obviously they're under age 81, but if they have at least a hundred thousand plus, just shoot me a text if you want. I just don't want reps sending me texts for 20,000 here, 30,000 here, but if it's over a hundred thousand, just text me. Lots of the people that you can talk to on your team that have already done annuities with me, I'm pretty, I try to be very good at getting back to people uh, from a communication standpoint, but I do obviously get really busy throughout the day as well. But if it's over a hundred thousand, just shoot me a text, see, some, see if I'm free. I might be able to do it in and up right then and there. If, if you can maybe send me a screenshot of the statement or I can walk through. And if I have time, we can maybe hop on a Zoom right then and there. I've done a ton of sales that way. Because um, the last thing I want you to do is have to come back if you don't need to. If we can get it done right then and there, while you've already built urgency, you've already built rapport, then that's the time to do it. But if, if anything, we can essentially go over some stuff and set up more urgency for the next meeting. Um, but if it's under 100, you, not that you can't text me, but obviously uh, I would say at least 100,000 plus, just text me right then and there. Um, but doing the fact finder is important to have that information because you can always send me the fact finder via email and I can look it over and see if there's anything there. Because um, lots of times there might not be something there, or, or the rep thinks there's it, it's in some one account, but it's not really in that account. There's nothing we can do there. Um, I'm trying to get more tech savvy. I'm not very tech savvy, but I actually asked if I have a a, a calendar. I'm, I'm I'm looking at doing one of those. I just was afraid to always have one because I was afraid that it, the stuff would be put on there that was not relevant, or be like, hey, I got three thousand dollars here. Can you do something with it? And I just blocked this off on my calendar, and it would have been a waste of time. But um, but I know one of the other reps, Patricia, told me that they can actually put the fact finder on there so I can see it before we have the meeting to see if we need to take it off the calendar or not. So I am exploring doing that to try to be even more um, available. But you can always text me or email me. I'm very good about getting back to people. Um, the other thing, having stuff, if you can have pictures of statements, um, lots of times that's just as important as a fact finder in most cases, especially if we're, I need to do a quick in and up because the statement will tell me for the most part what type of account it is. I can see usually the funds the money's invested in. So I can usually lots of times see the fees or I can do the Morningstar reports to see what the fund expenses are. So I can at least have talking points to go over. 
but it just really gives me a good idea of what they have right then and there. So if you can have statements, uh, send that to me, then that'd be great. Um, and then you yeah, at the bottom, I did say a hundred thousand right there. Okay. Um, and then the other part, the, the, when you're doing an in and up, this is really important. So just like you're doing in and ups with life insurance, I, I got to really express it's even more important to edify the specialist even more because lots of times this is their life savings. Like, I mean, it's, it's not a $50 a month or $70 a month life insurance policy that they can cancel. They don't have to put as much thought into that. Not saying life insurance is important because obviously it is, but if this is a hundred thousand dollars or $50,000, they might've worked their whole life for that where they need as much trust as possible to talk to some stranger they never met over a phone call or a zoom call. So you got to really edify me and say, Hey, this guy's really smart. Make him some stuff if you need to. Luckily, I am smart, but make him some stuff as far as, hey, he's he's bigger and busy. I don't know if I can get a hold of him, but luckily he likes me. Um, but I'm going to see if I can get him on the call because if he can help you, if anybody can help you, you can. Um, so that way I'm not some just random stranger they're talking to because that I've had those calls where I, in the middle of the call I can hear, hey, who's this guy again? Like, obviously, if they, if they don't know who I am at that point, then clearly uh, the introduction wasn't made there. But it's just more important than the life insurance because this is a big decision for them and this is their life savings. So they need to have a lot of trust. So edifying the specialist is important. Amen. I couldn't agree more with you. And it's amazing how the presentation that we've already been able to run off of for so many years allows this smooth transition because we've been able to create the vault with the senior, the value, mm -hmm. the urgency, the likability and the trust. The neat thing is it just flows so nicely that because we've been able to create that value with them, then of course it just, just allows that fluidity to go into an annuity. Uh, so it's really neat. And again, you know, even with Medicare folks, like we have a Medicare specialist, we've got the DreamMakers Medicare team. So again, we like to provide these connections to give the senior everything that they could possibly qualify for. So let's talk about the do's and the don'ts. All right. So do's and don'ts, and some of these might be funny to some people, but I've had it happen. But when you're doing a Zoom call, use an iPad or a laptop. Do not use your cell phone because <laughs> our seniors, uh, bless them, but obviously their sight, eyesight's not the best. And when they're looking at an illustration, which is already kind of small on the iPad, which is big if you're using the big one, I mean, it, it, they can't see what I'm looking at. So it's, it's kind of a waste of time where I've had that where, oh, should I – Madam, I'm often like halfway through the presentation, I'm like, oh, should I do some iPad? I'm like, yes, let's get out of there, go back on your iPad, because they can't see what I'm looking at, and they're just squinting, and it, it, it's kind of a waste of time if they can't see me clearly and they can't see the illustration. Or a lot of times, I'll, I'll have their statements pulled up, and I'll circle stuff on there to go over things, to point point things out to them, so to provide even more clarity on errors that they see in their existing accounts that they have to point out those flaws. But if they can't see it, then it's kind of a I don't mute point to, to, to go over. So definitely have your have your iPad. I, I think it's the easiest thing to do so you don't have to carry a laptop. But if you don't have one, then definitely a laptop, a big enough screen so they can see it. Definitely not your cell phone. The other thing is, and this is another error I've seen, is when you're doing the Zoom call, the second point, turn off your message, messages so they don't pop up on the iPad. Because if I need to text you something, um, I don't want them distracted by seeing all these pop downs on WhatsApp or the messages or anything. I'm not saying turn it off on your cell phone, keep those on, but turn it off on your iPad. You're not going to be using that lots of times anyways. But also last thing you want is one of your friends sending you a joking comment, joking about something or whatever. And then you just lost credibility because it's popped up and they can read it. And they're like, wait a minute, what is, what's this? Um, and then you just lost complete credibility and, and they're not going to move forward. Um, but also lots of times I might need to text you something to get, get me something or tell you something that I'm noticing I want you to bring up. And I don't want them to see me coaching you via text message. It kind of just defeats the whole purpose. Um, also, if I, the last part, if, if you need to end up with a client and I, and I, and I am free, try to call me or, or text me beforehand because I'll have calls all over the country from people calling me that I might not, it might be a new person I'm just referred to, another new agent. And I don't know if it's a scam call. I don't know who it is. And I'm like picking up and then I don't know if they're in the, in the house with somebody or they're just, are they on the road? I don't know. It, it, as far as if, if they're with somebody. So obviously I might need to be more careful what I'm saying or how I'm saying it. If I know that I'm on, on, on a, a speaker or you're with a client. So just give me a heads up, see if I'm free a, and then B let me know if you're in the house with somebody, even if it's a new call. Um, Cause I don't always know if you're there with somebody and I know people get excited, but just text them. Hey, FYI, I'm with the client. That way I know I'm on, on, I'm on speaker. So I have might have a even more professional <laughs> 
uh, demeanor about what I'm saying, as opposed to being more, more uh, laissez-faire as far as how we're talking amongst each other. Amen. Oh my gosh. I love these points. I mean, it's the little things, y'all. It's the little things that make the big difference. And I just love how you've just been able to see those little things, spot them out and say, okay, don't do this. I love it. So um, any other pointers? I know we've got a few minutes. Um, any other last minute things before we kind of open it up for questions? And if you have questions, folks, go ahead and put them in the chat for me if you don't mind. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, uh, other pointers? I mean, the, the biggest things, I guess, is just, I'm just trying to think as far as, because I try to put a lot of content on here just for today, but just for basic stuff. Um, biggest thing is don't feel like you have to know all this stuff. Um, cause I've had some reps that will make comments because they try to interact a lot. For example, if, if, if we're doing a zoom call presentation, don't feel like you need to talk that much because that will distract the client. Plus you might interrupt what I'm saying or, or say something that's wrong and I got to fix it. And I don't want to give misinformation to the client. Um, so lots of times if we're doing a zoom call, it's good. It's not bad for you to, to pipe in to, to ask some questions from here and there, but lots of times try to let me just take control of the meeting and let me talk that way. They're not getting distracted with you and then me, um, but definitely let them see the screen. Cause lots of times I'll have reps in front of the computer where I can't even see the client and they need to see more than anything. Don't feel like you need to be on there. Be beside them as you're a partner, you're an advocate with them, but be side by side, but let them see exactly what we're looking at. Absolutely. I love it. So folks, um, I know that uh, you guys are uh, chiming in here on this chat, how much money uh, Matt's been able to help you. And uh, he's been a huge blessing to work with. I can say that. Um, so I just want to say thank you publicly, Matt. Uh, thank you so much for working with the Dream Makers team and the Powerhouse team and just being really smooth to work with. Uh, you're a great communicator. I love that. I uh, love having the relationship with you and especially as we grow. Um, and folks, I do want to say this. Let's continue being that blessing to these folks that are pouring into us. Matt doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have to do this. So let's continue to be that blessing for him as well. So um, any questions, uh, folks, I did send the fact finder in the WhatsApp for the Dream Makers team, as well as for the Powerhouse team. So you folks should have that. I would recommend this. I would recommend put that fact finder at the very bottom of your presentation. When you do that, it allows you to, oh, circle back around, loop that rascal back around because it's right in front of you towards the very end. So I would recommend that hugely versus you having to go you know, through your notability to get that. Um, and the number is also on the fact finder. So Matt, um, if you could do me a favor in the chat, go ahead and put your phone number in there as well. But again, folks, his phone number and email is on that fact finder. Matt, any other last words? Um, I actually have a I have a question because you said this. You said, hey, look, you really don't have to know everything there is to know about annuities, okay? I remember when mm -hmm. I did my first annuity, it was with the Milner Group uh, because we didn't have elevation back then. And uh, it was a very smooth transition because I said, yeah, okay, you have a lot of money. Sure, absolutely. Let's go ahead and write this down. I don't even think there was a fact finder back then with the Milner Group or that we knew about. And bam, I just called the Milner Group and I said, this young lady's got a lot of money and I need some help. And they got an expert and bam, you know, it was, they took care of it. So let me ask you this, I, commissions. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, when it comes to commissions, I know we talked about this and it's kind of a sliding scale based upon how much the agent needs you. So let's talk about that. Yeah, so, so, so basically, so I'll never, so commission-wise, I'll never take... 50% less I'm having to fly there being a hotel and I've had to do that before and travel where obviously I got, I got expenses too. Um, and uh, uh, to, to pay for that, but generally as far as it depends, if it's family, then I'll take a lower uh, amount. I'd say the average is probably around 30, 35%, uh, percent, but it can be higher up to, up to 50. The only reason I would take more than 50%, which I've done that with Jared Trill. He doesn't mind me saying that where he handed me a client. He didn't want to be a part of it. He said, Hey Matt, Hey Matt, this person called me. He's actually a friend of my dad. I don't have time to talk to him, go meet with him, do everything. And I gave him 25% of it. And he did nothing. And he still made close to three grand on that sell. And he literally did nothing. And I was meeting, I met three or four different times. Um, but I gave him 25% and he didn't have to do anything. Um, so that'd be the only time I take more than 50%, but I don't like to take 50% unless I absolutely need to. Um, I like to give you guys the bulk of it. Um, but like Ashley said, help me help you. The more you can kind of get me the the less I have to, to, to be involved. Um, and that's kind of what we'd like to do is try to teach guys for doing the fact finders because 
most fact finders, which actually reside, did revise recently, actually, I'll, I'll send that new one out to you. Um, but most reps, unfortunately, they're not comfortable with these accounts. They don't usually complete the fact finder, right? So a lot of times I have to do it. The biggest point of the fact finder is for me to know is, is there an actually account there or has it been liquidated? Just like these life insurance policies. Yeah, I got life insurance. Here's the policy. Yeah, but is it in force? It's for me to know, A, is there even something there? And B, what's the account value? And is it is it movable? Once that's the case, we can do a call and then I can call and get pretty much an in-depth fact finder. So I ask all the right questions the right way. But for me, I really just need to know, do they actually have an account? What is it in roughly? And what's the account balance? Once I have all that, I don't need to know all the in, ins and outs of the account. I can do that um, for you. I just want to see if it's, is it relevant? Is there even a case here or not? That's what my goal for you guys is to teach is, is there even anything here worth doing or is it a waste of time? Um, and that's why I like to go over amounts. For example, I had a text from another rep yesterday who texted me for a th lady had $3,000. I was like, we can't, I can't, we can't do anything with that. Um, so I'm going to eliminate those text messages or, or those distractions because you got better things to do to text me stuff like that. Um, so I don't want these small accounts to be a distraction. And that's why I wanted to say, Hey, at least 50,000, not that we couldn't do below that, but ideally 50 should be kind of a good cutoff. Um, but um, but I'll send out that new fact finder to you, Ashley. That. Yeah, and I think you actually did send it to me. Um, I think it was sent the other day, unless you revised it. But here's another question. Um, what can they expect after you do that Zoom call? What, what can they expect mm -hmm. when it comes to communication? So, for example, you're writing the application in your number. Now, folks, remember, everything is going to elevation. So even Matt doesn't get paid. It all goes to elevation. And then Jordan oversees it with Matt. And then Matt says, hey, look, here's the, you know, comp breakdown or comp breakdown breakdowns. But remember, even when the money is moved, you still have to wait 30 days because there's this, you know, 31 day free look because that senior or that client can cancel that annuity. And then, bam, if they already paid you out, that's not a good thing. So they want to wait 31 days to make sure everything clears and everything's good. And then they do the payout. Now, the neat thing also with Elevation, which I'm so grateful for, is that folks that are managers, folks that are AG2 and already have somebody um, you know, on their team, guess what? You are all a part of this. How neat is that, right? Especially if there's a manager that really helped a lot in this case. Hey, guess what? You talk to Matt, there might be a little bit different portion payout, okay? Which I really love that fact that if we all work together here, we're all helping each other out, right? You're helping your team out. So, um, you know, versus, uh, I just think that's a really great thing. I remember, um, you know, typical payouts, man, Matt, you could probably, uh, relate some of these annuity payouts. It'd be anywhere from what one, 2%. And so to have elevation pay, what minimum is about what 5% out. Is that right? On the cash? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's real, real, real four or 5%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four to 5% based on the person's age. So, um, and, and how cool is that to be able to say, okay, if it's four to 5% payout, and if Matt has to do a lot of stuff, but he doesn't have to fly there or drive there, he's getting 20, 30, 40% of the 5%. And then there's these little things above that 5% that guess what? That gets paid out to the upline, tiny little bits. So that's what I'm saying, folks. We want to encourage our teams to what? To really uncover these IRAs and annuities. Um, anything else, Matt, that you can say in closing? But as, as far as back to the expectations, as far as what, what do they expect from me? So Basically, what I'm doing, I'm not just doing the presentation and the Zoom. I know Lee was doing that. Um, I'm actually helping get the money moved over, which can be really tricky if you don't know how to do the transfer paperwork. You don't know the type of notarizations or there's different types of uh, securities um, no notarizations that people don't know of unless you have your securities backgrounds like I do, um, where you're going to waste a lot of time getting submitting stuff. And it's going to keep getting rejected from the annuity company because you don't know what you're doing. You weren't trained to do this. You don't have that investment background like I do, which is why I say don't, not that I don't want people to try to learn it, but there's a reason why a lot of people don't do what we do where I had that investment background. So it just made sense um, for me to do this role because I was trained to do it. I had the license to do it. Uh, we're most of our 99% of our age don't have those licenses to do it, which makes it tougher for the ones that try to do it. And then they're like, they get defeated and they're like, I don't want to do annuities at all because they had a bad experience because they didn't know what they're doing. But expectation wise, I'm communicating with, okay, with the client, the client's reaching out to me. Lots of times there's a lot more uh, annual review stuff with the annuity stuff than life insurance stuff. Lots of times it's okay if the client calls me to do it. I'll help them with the RMD, the distribution paperwork, 
Um, but biggest thing is I'm helping move the money over from where it's at. Let's say it's at Fidelity Investment Company over to here at Fidelity and Guarantee, F and G. Um, so I'm having to do that transition, meet with the client to do that stuff where you're not really having to do that unless I need you a part of the conversation. But there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that, that reps don't see. They think the, you hit a button and the money, you just do an app and then the money just transfers over like life insurance. It is not like that at all. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff is moving the money over, which we don't want you guys to have to do because we want you out there selling final expense where if you took the time to do it, you'd be losing a lot of money on the back end, out of the field, on hold time for an hour, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to help not only with the Zoom, the illustrations, but also moving the money over, making sure it gets paid over, but also communicating with Elevation where if we haven't done a, a, a Zoom call before, or if you've never done an annuity before, we need to get you set up on direct deposit with Elevation. So I lots of times will communicate that with them and say, hey, Chelsea, get them set up on direct deposit. So that way, once the money moves over, you're not having to wait another five to seven days because it can take five to six days to, to, to set your direct deposit up. Amen. Well, folks, it has been an absolute honor to have you here, Matt, with us uh, on the DreamMakers team and the Powerhouse team. So we're very grateful for you. All the other questions, feel free to text Matt. But other than that, let's make it a great day as we are in NASB madness. Y'all take care. Let's go.